This is JPTN and this is my short review of the new Bell LG Optimus LTE phone. Uh, it's the first phone available in Canada with a 720p uh, display. So it's HD, it's 1280 by 720 It uses LG's IPS technology on the LCD and as many of you know, LG is the manufacturer that makes the uh, screen for the iPhone 4 so this does match the 326 pixel per inch density but the screen is 4.5 inches as opposed to Apple's 3.5 inch so just a short walkthrough of some of the features and functionality and um, why you might consider this phone um, it's a standard rectangle candy bar and no no like hump on the like the Galaxy S2 or the Motorola Razr it's just a flat bar on the back you've got your 8 megapixel camera this textured surface and it's an LED flash the camera shoots 1080p video on the left side which I find strange is the volume rocker um, just because most people 90 percent of the world is right handed so most people are used to holding it in their right hand and using the volume controls instead of using it this side but that just might be personal preference on the front here right there is the 1.3 megapixel front facing camera for a video calling on top you've got the 3.5 inch headphone jack the power switch and the micro USB port which uses MHL to do um, HDMI out with the adapter I actually find this cover really flimsy and um, it's really fragile and for something that you have to use almost every single day to charge or connect um, I don't like that design but otherwise, it's a very solid phone, no creaks, even though it's plastic, uh, very solid. Um, one thing I do like about the screen is that the glass actually sits above the bezel. You can almost see it here. So when you're using it, when you're running your fingers across, you never hit an edge. So it's very easy to get to the edges, and it's very easy to scroll and move around. You don't actually touch an edge on, on any of the sides. At the bottom, you've got capacitive uh, buttons menu, home, and back another aspect of this phone is um, the screen uh, I don't know, I couldn't find information on if it was uh, fortified or gorilla glass or something but in my week and a half and a bit with it um, you know there's no issues with the screen, there's no scratches or blemishes so I suspect that it is uh, fortified or scratch proof or scratch at least very scratch resistant glass um, no issues on the back or the case. Now I'm just going to take a look at the interface of the phone itself. Uh, LG hasn't modified Android too much, so you've got your home screen, um, your widgets, and LG's added in the ability to save your layouts. So you can have a layout for work, a layout for the weekend, etc. And this saves all the icons as well as your widgets and placements. So it makes it convenient uh, if you want to switch things around. Um, across the bottom, there's four permanent icons, and you can only change the middle two. Uh, the left stays as the phone, and the right opens up the app drawer. So inside the app drawer, this is the default view. Um, applications is all the pre-installed applications that you can't remove. Um, GPS, Bell applications, LG applications, etc. And the bottom is applications you've installed either from the market or on your SD card. Um, however, you can modify this. So you can just edit the layout. So you've got your categories. Uh, you've got page view, which is the standard page view most people are familiar with. And as well, you've got the giant list, which looks familiar to a, the phone contact list. Um, underneath category, you can actually edit and create your own categories. So let's say add one now. I'll call this blue chip. save and then you can move different uh, applications into your category so let's say I moved in the alarm clock and the browser so now I've got my uh, blue, blue chip category applications and downloads and you can also rearrange these as well so let's say downloads is second and go back so now we hit back and there it is and they're collapsible in the page view, let's go to page view. You can also um, manage the apps 
by moving them around. So this is similar to the Sony Ericsson home screen where you can move around your apps and your placement. So page one would be the most important, page two, etc. And you can just also quickly reset everything. Um, so that's pretty much it for the layout. Um, LG does include some other abilities that I haven't seen. So under display, you can actually change the display font. So you've got a bunch of different fonts here. So let's just change to my heart. And as you can see, it changes the font throughout the entire uh, phone. So overall, their launcher is pretty customizable and uh, does come with some decent options. I'm just going to change back to categories. Let's just go into the camera. So the camera, as you can see, is really, really quick. No issues with the portrait landscape, but it only comes with some basic features. So if you go into settings, we've only got face tracking, um, different scene modes, and just basic color effects. So just a basic camera, but overall it does uh, activate very quickly and it does uh, take photos quickly. But there's no physical camera button, so you have to use the screen. Going into the display, right now it's on automatic. Oops. But if I turn up the brightness, you can just see how bright it is. So this is the lowest, and that's the brightest. So now I'm just going to show off the browser to show uh, the differences in resolution and what you get with uh, 720p versus uh, 854 by 480 as on the um, my Xperia Arc. Uh, both these displays are turned up to maximum brightness. Um, and as you can see, you've got more wider, uh, it's wider, so the text, there's more space on the side as well as across the bottom. We've got an extra, a few extra lines there. But of course, um, video and multimedia playback is where uh, this phone definitely shines. And again, it is equipped with the micro USB adapter to MHL um, HDMI. To demonstrate uh, just the difference in resolution, uh, I've created a simple JPEG with all the different screen sizes, uh, just because some people might have um, difficulty trying to imagine all the different uh, resolutions and screen sizes. So to start off, we've got 800 by 480, uh, which is uh, on many phones, such as the Samsung Galaxy S2. Next up, we've got 854 by 480, which is used by Sony Ericsson. Uh, the teal area, we've got 960 by 540 which is used by Motorola as well as HTC. Then next up we've got 960 by 640 which is used by the Apple iPhone 4 and 4S. And at the top here you've got 720 by 1280 which is what this phone is as well as the uh, Google Nexus. So I'm just going to rotate this. And there you can see it. Uh, oops. just how much screen real estate you, you do actually have. The phone does run on Bell's 4G LTE network, so I'm just going to turn off Wi-Fi. And as you can see from some previous uh, speed test results, uh, depending on where you are and the condition of the network, I have hit 28 megs as well as 8 meg up. So it is capable of very fast speeds, but uh, it does vary depending on where you are. Um, the next thing I just want to show off is something I've been waiting for in a smartphone for a while, and that is uh, native MKV playback. So if you go into the video player, it does come with some sample clips. I'm just going to play one and as you can see from the quality it is pretty spectacular uh, 
the detail and resolution is amazing. So those are some of the uh, pre-installed clips, but uh, here are some MKVs I've downloaded from the internet. Um, I download most of my TV and stuff just because uh, I don't have time to watch it without uh, commercials and that type of stuff. So these are all MKV uh, 720p or 1080p uh, using probably high 3.1, 3.2 or even 4.1 profile. So this is house. Speaking of which, your two baby girls. Wow, nice. 720p, no issue. Um, as well, this is a 1080p video sample, MKV. And as you can see, everything's fluid, audio, and no issues there. Um, this phone does support DLNA, so if you go into Smart Share, it'll go over Wi Fi, and you can stream it to any compatible devices, so Blu ray players. Um, your TV if it supports MKV, etc., uh, as well as AVI. Um, so this is the first phone I've played with that natively, without any third-party applications, uh, supports MKV playback and handles 720p and 1080p flawlessly. In this part of the video, I'm just going to show off wireless uh, DLNA streaming from the phone to my gigabit uh, Ethernet connected desktop computer and Windows Media Player. So I'm just going to select my computer, go into videos, camera, and it, I could get it to stream 1080p content from the camcorder flawlessly, but not uh, MKV content. Last video from the LG Optimus LTE. Uh, testing out the camcorder in 1080p recording in its native MP4 format. And as always, you can control the playback on here. So now I'm just going to load up SmartShare again and try to stream some MKVs. And this is actually harder than it looks with one hand. So under media, this is a 1080p MKV. And while it does load up, it's uh, you can see it's lagging. On to the next sample. Uh, this is a 720p MKV. And once it loads up in buffers, it should play regularly. There you go. So it does take a few seconds. Um, so the phone can stream wirelessly MKVs in 720 and MP4s in 720 and 1080p. Now I'm just going to show off MHL uh, HDMI mirroring. So this is an MHL adapter. Um, on one end it's got a full size HDMI on the other end you've got the male micro USB as well as a female micro USB for simultaneous charging so I'm just going to plug this into my TV there it is and plug it into the top of the uh, LG power button so you can see that it is charging and there it is on the screen so it does only output 720p but it does do uh, HDMI mirroring 
Um, if you're in an application that does landscape, it'll do landscape. And if it's uh, portrait only, such as the home screen, it'll be portrait only. But uh, that is up to the uh, manufacturer. So I'm just going to play some video clips again. And you do have to keep the phone on because it is mirrored. Um, it does output full HD audio as well, so uh, surround sound if your MKV file supports it. Um, ah. I'm just going to play back a 1080p file just to show that it does play flawlessly, but uh, it down converts it to 720. So there's the Terminator. Grab my TV remote and hit display. And as you can see, it's 720p. And that's HDMI mirroring via this uh, adapter. Um, they're actually pretty hard to find. I had to get mine on eBay, but they're, they're about uh, $10, so it's not too bad. Just a note for the uh, HDMI mirroring, you do have to plug in a power source. Um, you can't just use it without power. So I'm just going to turn on the phone to show that it is mirroring. And then I'm just going to unplug the power. So if you unplug the power, it will not mirror. And just to show that it does work in landscape mode, I'm just going to plug in the Galaxy Nexus. And unlock it, but as you can see, it automatically switches to landscape when it mirrors. Um, so portrait and landscape modes is uh, up to the build and the firmware from each manufacturer. Other than that, um, the Bell phone's got some pre-installed apps. So you've got Simpatico, which is the publication I write for, Bell Remote PVR, uh, LG's App World, um, built-in technical support, as well as a bunch of other apps. Um, this phone should be getting ice cream sandwich in a few months, though LG hasn't specifically said when it would. But uh, considering it's their flagship 720 phone, uh, 720p phone, um, it should be getting the update very, very soon. Um, other than that, um, hopefully I'll be able to compare the, the this video screen on this versus the Galaxy uh, Nexus. And um, if you have any other questions, just uh, sound off in the comments.